So, TRT in the sun, final episode. Common question, does HCG spike estrogen? Well, the answer is no. However, that's not really the right question. The question should be, can it? And the answer to that is yes. Now, why? Because normally, LH is released in a pulsatile manner from the pituitary. It isn't a constant flow of LH stimulating the testicles to produce testosterone and subsequent aromatization of the testosterone in the testicles to estrogen. So it can. Does it? No, but it can. So, how do you minimize the risk of aromatization? Well, number one, you have to obviously prescribe the HCG correctly, and that means dose and frequency. It's important to realize that HCG, which mimics LH, luteinizing hormone, is super important. So the benefits of HCG are obviously fertility, upregulation of the steroid hormones that cascade down from pregnenolone, and there's also a qualitative improvement in things like libido because HCG uh, stroke LH, there are receptors in the brain. So you should be on HCG to replace the LH that is suppressed during testosterone replacement therapy. HCG is integral to hormone optimization. Now, it's rather unfortunate, but we do have a propensity to aromatization, pretty much because the lifestyles we lead, the environment we live in, are pretty unhealthy. So obviously the common ones include obviously increased body habitus. So if you're fat, unfortunately there's expression of the aromatase enzyme there. If you have any liver dysfunction, then you get overexpression of the aromatase enzyme. So if you're on any medications, if you're a drinker, uh, if you eat crap. So, you know, unfortunately, pretty much everybody is prone to a little bit of aromatization. But normally, if prescribed correctly, it doesn't cause estrogenic symptoms. So the HCG that we prescribe provides a continuous flow of HCG to the testicles. So it doesn't really mimic the natural physiology as perfectly as we can. But it's the price you pay. Uh, and that price, in my opinion, is worth it. So, when it comes to somebody who's got, a, is pretty heavy, or somebody's on medications, or somebody that's a bit of a boozer, and they're worried that HCG is gonna spike their estrogen, it always comes down to benefit-risk discussion. So, I think, the benefits of being on HCG outweigh the risks. So if HCG is gonna spike your estrogen, what I would look to do is I would look to obviously correct the lifestyle things that are causing the spike, but also look to potentially prescribe you a low dose aromatase inhibitor. Now again, the bros are all on the bandwagon now talking about the fact you should never have an AI because it causes cancer and all this business. I've, ad I've addressed this before, but you know, if prescribed correctly, the benefits of having an aromatase inhibitor to lower your estrogen so that you feel the qualitative effects of having a optimal testosterone, estrogen, and DHT, that makes sense to me. Now, TRT is a work in progress. It's an evolving process. So if you were to have an aromatase inhibitor, it isn't something that I would think, okay, we're gonna be on it for life because we're gonna be looking to address those lifestyle things and those environmental things that are causing you to need an aromatase inhibitor. You will be under active follow-up with me. So 
if we can wean you off the aromatase inhibitor, we will. So when you think about the question, can HCG spike estrogen? You know, you have to, you have, to have an understanding of HCG's role in testosterone replacement therapy and unfortunately the bros don't so you know <sighs> testosterone replacement therapy is uh, an interesting field it's obviously a field that I specialize in um, it's not something that you can dip in and out of it's something that you need to dedicate your time to and appreciate that there is no one-size-fits-all model to this However, you need to have a doctor that's going to work in your best interests. So, yeah, choose wisely. Ta-da from Marbella. Uh, back in the UK later for TRT in the grey. <laughs> Ta-da.